Scrabble TV. Welcome to Binge and Purge. I'm Kevin Hines, and basically, I spend my entire weekends binge watching your favorite television shows on Netflix so you can go enjoy life. This morning, I'm hungover from just two beers. It's sad. Today is a total wash. I'm just going to settle in with some comfort food. See, popcorn and shit. And a little Netflix. But really, I need something greasy. I need some explosions, red meat, and some family togetherness. You know, Bob's Burgers has all of these things. Hell, it's the best written show on television right now. The show centers on Bob, Burger Chef, and his insane family, his wife, Linda, and three children, Tina, Jean, and Louise. Think Simpsons back when it was good. The family dynamic is there, and the humor is just spot on. Featuring the voice talents of H. John Benjamin, who has been on tons of animated shows, from Dr. Katz to Archer. His delivery is hysterical, and he's surrounded by one of the most talented voice casts ever to come to television. Even Kevin Klein contributes his regular character, Mr. Fishoder, owner of the dilapidated amusement park and is also Bob's landlord. Bob's Burgers feels like a return to form for the family sitcom. It has its own distinct voice and harkens back to a time when shows of that ilk were fresh and didn't oversaturate the market. I'm thinking the original family ties here. Alex P. Keaton and his fucking... Can I curse on here? Each family member is distinctive. Tina is the wallflower introvert. <sighs> Jean is the middle child constantly seeking attention. This is me now! And Louise... Well, Louise is just a hardcore badass. Just slap your face. She scares me. Linda is the carefree wine-drinking mom who is a love for musical dinner theater and, well, wine, like most suburban mothers. Bob is the glue that is attempting to keep their sanity together. It's all for the restaurant. My favorite episodes usually revolve around Tina because, well, I'm awkward. She's awkward, and we share a love of butts. All of the butts. The best e Tina episode is Tinasaurus Rex. Tina hits a parked car in a deserted parking lot when Bob lets her drive. Let's make this kitty purr. It's a building tension as Bob playfully states at first that they're heading for a parked car that is well on the other side of the lot. And the sheer terror that comes over him as he realizes Tina won't stop. Turn away or stop! Just this one scene combines everything that makes the show work. The pacing, the writing, the voice work, it just comes together brilliantly. The show is also replete with musical numbers, and every episode ends with a full version of whatever ditty creeped into that week's story. Bob's Burgers caught me by surprise when it first premiered. I am thankful Fox, in all of its wisdom, allowed this show to be greenlit and let it build a following, especially on the crowded Sunday night schedule, which became worrisome that it would only be dominated by Seth MacFarlane shows. The less said about those, the better. It filled a void that was left in the wake of Mike Judge's brilliant King of the Hill, which is another one you should check out and I would love to explore on the show later. I hope the show runs for 20 seasons and has the opportunity to evolve from something I love to something that's played out. I'm looking at you, Homer. No! Oh. Huh. Hangover is wearing off. <clears throat> I think it was a bacon burp. It tasted way better on the way in, man. Fucking love bacon. I, I can curse, okay. Anyway, do yourself a favor. If you've not checked out Bob's Burgers, watch it now. It's available on nearly every streaming service from Netflix to Hulu Plus. Actually, I think it might be only available on those two. I have not done my research. Okay, signing off. <laughs>